as we continue to see outpouring of love from all Kansas City Super Bowl champion players, of course, coaches, fans alike. We've been waiting to talk to this stud, this star cornerback for a very long time. And I think, I think, Legereus Sneed, you probably waited until I had to refer to you as Super Bowl champion, Legereus Sneed. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm glad to talk to you. I wish the vibe was more <laughs> celebratory, which is what it should be, of course. You're at this, we got to start here. You're at this Super Bowl parade. It should be like the moment of pure joy, and then this tragedy breaks out. Uh, of course, I want to give you a moment to thank the first responders, everybody who jumped in, and I think maybe just start with what your experience of that was yesterday. Oh, uh, yeah, man. I just want to thank, you know, all the guys who rescued everyone and try to make sure everyone was safe, but it was a tragedy, something I've never seen or experienced. But, you know, praying for KC and praying for everybody, all the families and everything. Did you see any of those? Like, you know, There's reports about Blaine Gabbert, Andy Reid, Trey Smith, you know, helping kids. Did you see any of that? No, I didn't see anything, but you know, I saw kids running and everything. I had a couple of kids by my side as well. Uh, and speaking of kids, I can't. I mean, I, I imagine this hit you uh, in a different way because you have a, a lot going on in your life right now. You win the Lombardi, so deserved, so incredible, and you also. When did you have you and Bella? Wu, when did you have this baby girl? Like ten seconds ago. I had her like yeah, like ten seconds ago, really. <laughs> it's like four days ago on the field. I had on the field. How yeah. did you handle both? Legerious, both uh, on the Super Bowl, having to lock in, and a newborn. And congratulations. Uh, it, was, it was kind of tough, but, you know, I balanced it out, and, you know, I got through it and got her a Super Bowl ring. You did. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty nice first gift for, for, for a baby. Yeah, girls really love, is. listen, girls love jewelry. I'll tell you that. Yeah, they do. Uh, <laughs> I loved this video of you celebrating the win with your family on the field. The confetti angels, you love to see it. That's your mom, Jane, your son, Kyson. You know, they're all joining in on the fun. What did, just tell me, what did this feel like? Oh, man, it was, I think this feeling never gets old. You know, last year I had them with me, and this year it felt like even more better. You know, I had them there with me. And, you know, just the experience, man, my son, that's something my son and family will never forget. He'll cherish that for the rest of his life. What made this year what made this year stand apart? We've heard a lot from Travis Kelsey about how it meant more. There was more adversity. Yeah, I can say, man, this whole entire year, you know, we've been facing adversity. Everybody didn't believe in us. Like they was down us the whole entire year, and we was the champs. I don't know why they was down us, you know, but we had our fun to share. Our offense, you know, we all stayed together as a team. And, you know, we got to the end, we fought to the end, and came out with the ring as the champions. Do you wish you could have watched Jamar Chase watch that Super Bowl win? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> he probably was in the stand. He probably what? He probably was in the stands. He's probably in the stands. I don't know about that, yeah, but was. but I was in the stands, and I'm watching all of this happen, all the Chiefs fans. It's, it's, it's emotional. It's beautiful. And then I'm thinking, Sneed, you got to come back for the three-peat. I hope so. I hope I'm here, but you know, you never know how it goes. And I hope I'm here. You know, I'm just playing it out, just do what I do, just play ball, and that's gonna come wherever I'm at and get my best. Well, you can't, LJ. You you can't you can't let Chris Jones tell everybody that he's not going anywhere, and not tell everybody <laughs> that you're not going anywhere. Are you coming <laughs> back? I hope so, you know, I hope so. You know, they can't keep both of us. I don't think they got enough for both of us, but, you know, they're going to make it happen, I hope so. You were locked uh, locked up in a battle the entire Super Bowl with a receiver that I like a lot named Brandon Ayuk, and things got a little chippy between the two of you. Of course it did. But you held him mm -hmm. to three catches for 49 yards. You, not a surprise. You kind of did that to every wide receiver one this season. So many receivers seem to get frustrated against you. Why is that? They don't like me. They don't like me. I'm aggressive on them. They don't like aggressive corners. They always say I'm holding them and all that, but you know, they don't like that. And that's what I love about my game. I love to get in their head and get them out their game. And, you know, the stats don't lie. Which wide receiver doesn't like you the most? Uh, I think um, Jamar Chase. I think he's, he don't like the Chiefs, period. He don't like us, period. Yeah. What kind of stuff does he say out there? 
Uh, look, me and him get very chippy. He, <laughs> he, he got a mouth on him. He got a, he got a mouth on him. What does he say? Uh, I can't say it on the camera. What he used to say. <laughs> Inappropriate. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. You, you have a baby girl now. You gotta watch. You gotta watch what's out there. Uh, Spags, I think Spags should be in the Hall of Fame. So hey, listen. Spags so, we so, trust, man. so get hey, this. Spags so get this. No coordinator has been inducted as a coordinator into the Hall of Fame. He has four Super Bowl rings now. Make the case for Spags to get a golden bust, the gold jacket, the whole nine. I think I think he deserves it, man. Look at the stats and look what he's been doing. Each year he's been in Kansas City, you know, he progresses each year he's been here. Um, and Spags, I wanted to ask you about this. He talked about his, his decision to adjust to play more man coverage as the game went on. And clearly watching, that's what made the difference. Was that something that you and Trent, like, did you ask for that? You know, and yes, what was the, definitely. Please, me and, Trent, me and Trent definitely asked for that. You know, we, we play a zone, we get too soft, and we have, like, the holes in the zones, so we tell coach, man, man, that's something. Let's put hands on guys and they'll throw the time off with the quarterback. So what was the difference that you noticed out there when that adjustment and that strategy changed? Oh, man, the run game, you know, put pressure on Brock. And, you know, he got fears and everything. Spaz, he didn't know what Spaz was throwing at him. You know, it helped us out on the back end. Shout out to the front line, man, Chris Jones, all the other guys. Um, I mean, it was a tough day for those Niners receivers, but you made it easy on this camera guy. With, with the unheralded, nobody's talking about this. This hurdle uh, at the Super Bowl. Walk me through this. Oh man, he 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 came right before my eyes. I didn't see him at first, and I just jumped, was trying to leap over him, and it was successful. <laughs> <laughs> you said after the game that your defensive plan was to make Brock Purdy throw the ball. You just said y'all confused him. People took that as you maybe throwing some shade at Purdy. But Spags, very comp and Spags we trust, he was really complimentary about how he attacked the zone defense, right? He, he said mm -hmm. he made it tough on you guys, and that's why he had to switch things up. Would you agree with your coach? Yes, I agree. I agree with Spags. You know, we just try to confuse Brock, you know, throw a lot of pressure at him and get him off his feet and get him guessing. And that's what Spags did. Um, when, when, you know, I saw the footage yesterday of, of Mahomes and Travis saying they want the ball. Like, what's going? What is this? And that whole thing happened with um, the sort of the confusion in overtime. What was? Where were you when you heard that? That's how it went down. What were you thinking? Uh, you know, I didn't see it at the moment. I didn't see it after the game. But I know what kind of player Travis is. You know, he's a competitor. He don't want to come off the field. And that's why I love playing with that guy. And love being his teammate. You know. You're, what round were you taking in, Ladarius? I'm taking in the fourth round. Taking in the fourth round. What would you What okay. would you like to say as we wrap the show up here to Brett Veach? And I have a lot of love for your GM and what he's done building this dynasty. What would you like to say? Man, pay me. <laughs> pay me. Pay <laughs> me. That's what I got to say. Pay me. Okay. I mean, I don't even know. I think that we have to wrap it there. Pay the man. Super Bowl champion, LeJerry Sneed, of course. You worked so hard. Congrats on being a new dad or a new dad to a baby girl. You, of course, had your son, Kyson. Uh, but it, it, enjoy it, of course. I appreciate the love and support that you're showing Kansas City, the love you have for them. Yeah. And, uh, and pay the man. Pay the man. We don't want you working at Raising Cane's, you know, like you were this not season. No, we don't want that. That's not my job. <laughs> That's not your job. Your job is to make wide receivers frustrated. We appreciate you, LJ. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.